Good afternoon everyone and welcome. Uh, thank you very much for coming out to see me. Uh, my name's Scott Wiseman, I'm the new CEO for Dogs Queensland um, and I started at the end of January so uh, about 11 weeks now into, into the role. A bit about myself, I've got 18 years experience in the not-for-profit industry uh, and space across different organisations. I've taken an organisation from being a state-based to, to a national organisation. I've merged organisations together uh, and I've also turned organisations around from a lost situation to a, to a surplus. As I said, I commenced at the end of January and through that time so we've been focused on getting to know you as members and your organisation as well. In understanding the way forward, it's important that we look at where we are now and how we've sort of got to. So we've done a lot of analysis to start with, and this next graph talks about our performance over the last number of years. So we've mapped it from 2013 through to now. So over the past five years, the interesting thing to notice is that expenses and revenue have both sort of been on a parallel, which is a good thing because you want to be, uh, and both sort of stemming upwards as well, or trending upwards, that's a very positive thing. And it's tracking along okay. Obviously expenses have been climbing a little bit faster than revenue, but uh, that's what we're here to address. In 2016 and 2017, we have the situation where expenses seem to have taken a, a, a sharp turn upwards, um, and they were now into a loss sort of situation. But the question we ask there is why? So in terms of the activity over that time, um, we had the opportunity of moving the offices to Jurac, um, and that was a cost of around $200,000. And the important thing to note um, is that during the 16, 17 years, your revenue is still increasing as well. In 2018, expenses have continued to go upwards with the costs associated with the master's proposal and the ramifications of that uh, which have spun off as well with extra consultants, legal expenses, etc. The other consequence we've seen in terms of the blue line in terms of a dip in, is a dip in the revenue, a dip in income. And that's good because we sort of seem to have taken the eye off the ball, I suppose, in membership uh, and uh, in terms of activity as well. And that's something we need to, to address and work towards. And I guess that's where I come in, looking at from an organisation in a, in, a, in, a, in a deficit sort of situation and moving it into a surplus situation. So my immediate goals are really about sort of getting things back on track and getting the organisation going forward again. Oops. So since I started at the end of January, we've uh, been fairly active in taking some direct, direct steps uh, to make some actions. Um, and uh, one of the first ones we did was look at the workflows within the office. So we've rearranged the workflows within the office so they move more efficiently and more effectively. And this is evidenced by the stats. The stats are better now. Um, I'm pleased to say we've got uh, associate the sporting registers are up to date. We've got memberships being processed within five days. We've got titles that are all up to date. We've got the transfers within, all happening within five days. DNA, the complete applications are all up to date. Frozen semen's up to date. Prefixes are up to date. And letters, all the complete applications are now up to date as well. So that's a really positive sign uh, and a really good turnaround since when I started, um, we were a fair way behind on, on a number of those sort of statistics. The other thing we've been focused on is developing the budgets for 2019, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail as we go through. We've also employed a full-time accounts person. Um, finance is an important part of any organisation, so we're making sure we've brought that person in-house um, so we can make sure exactly what's happening. We've had a number of meetings with members, uh, and I've been vis visible at as many shows as I can. Uh, we've also been working on employment manuals, uh, which are in final drafts, and with the new board starting now, we've got the director and committee packs, uh, which are in final drafts as well. So there's lots to do, um, and we're also working on drafting the business plans um, and reviewing the publications. I know Dog World and the Paw Prince is an important part of, uh, of, of membership, um, so we want to make sure we're getting that right. Um, so there's a review of that happening at the moment. We're also reviewing all of our promotional material and our marketing material as well, and we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. And all this time, we're trying to spend as much time as we can talking to members, uh, being out at the shows and, and hearing your, your views firsthand. So there's lots to do, so let's get on with it. In terms of the budget for 2019, 
We addressed it by taking a business unit approach to the, to the business. So we broke the, the Dogs, world, or Dogs Queensland up into different business units. So we looked at Juratic as a business unit. We looked at the publications as a business unit. We looked at operations. We looked at the uh, DNA, opera and, uh, DNA and the processing, uh, all as the individual business units. And we gave them a revenue uh, and a, an expenses budget. So all the staff now know exactly what's expected of them in relation to uh, accountability and what, what's expected of them, I suppose, going forward. That all feeds into their KPIs so we can manage their performance. And one of the key that benefits out of it is they get accountability, ownership, and there's obviously some direct KPI measurements as well. I must say the staff within the organisation are all very passionate and dedicated um, to doing what we need them to do, uh, and they all work very well together and getting on with their jobs. I mentioned the budget before. This is the target surplus for the budget for 2019. So it's a surplus of $153,218, with revenues of $2,466,821, and expenses of $2,313,540. So it's a big turnaround from a loss last year and the previous year as well to a, to a surplus position. And if we look back at the graph we focused on originally, uh, which sort of mapped our performance over the past few years, you'll see if we can achieve what we're looking for, um, it'll be in this circle area where we end up with revenues crossing back and expenses coming down as well. The other important thing to note, note there is this expenditure line here we're back to where we were 2016. So we're reducing the cost back down and, uh, and bringing them back under control. All the while we focus on improving income as well. And that's about improving your participation and improving uh, engagement with, uh, with membership as well. The key focus of the, of the budget is really about stability in the first place, but it's also about taking advantage of the opportunities that we've got in front of us. Stability, obviously the last two years, and I'm not telling anyone anything in new, but the last two years have been a little bit turbulent for Dogs Queensland. You've had a lot of things happening, moving out to Jurac and then proposals to sell Jurac and, and move to somewhere else. Um, so this year is really about sort of settling the ship down, getting everything back on track and looking to grow the organisation as well. I mentioned opportunities at hand. And what I mean by opportunities at hand is those things that we're doing now that we can probably enhance on or probably do a bit better uh, or we can take advantage of the maybe that we're not taking advantage of now. So the first one is the shows, trials and events. How do we grow participation in those? It's about promoting Dogs Queensland more effectively across all areas. I've been to a number of shows already, those shows that I've been able to get to. Um, and one of the first things that I see is people's passion, their excitement and their energy about showing dogs or, or trialling their dogs if it's the agility side of things and the dog sports. Um, you've all got a great deal of passion. We just need to bottle that. We need to cap capture that and express that to the rest of the rest of the world, rest of the general public. Get them as excited about the dog sports and the showing as, as we are. We need to get this to engage with a wider community and get them starting to become more involved. Maybe they haven't thought about showing dogs before or trialling dogs, uh, or they probably don't even know about it. So it's about us being outwardly focused to make sure that message goes outward. We need you to be all sharing your experience and your knowledge, especially with these new people. The number of people that I've, or the number of shows I've been to, I've always sort of met some of the new newcomers, the first timers or the, the recent people that are new to showing or trialling. Um, they're all really excited. They're, <laughs> they're all really excited um, and enthusiastic. Their eyes are wide, they're, they're, it's, 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 it's exciting for them. We need to be sort of capturing those and nurturing those people through as we come through. An interesting fact is that we get over a thousand new members every year. The problem is we're not holding those members. And I'll show you in a minute about memberships that are going downwards uh, of recent times, but you know, it, it's, it's, and that's not natural attrition. It, it's bigger than that. It's, it's something that we need to correct. We need to get people engaged with, with what we're doing and excited about with what we're doing. 
So my, my key cash words are, are passion, excitement and enthusiasm. And that's something we're trying to instil in the office, but we need that to go through the whole membership as, as well. So we need to document it, promote it and, importantly, demonstrate it at the shows. This, this phrase here is actually drawn straight from the uh, strategic plan. Um, so purely for dogs, contributing to the well-being of individuals, families and communities. What's interesting about this statement is it's very outwardly focused. It's not Dogs Queensland's going to be the biggest dog organisation in the world. It's about looking after individuals, families, communities. So it's an outward looking expression or an outward looking statement. We need to get our activities and our actions to be that as well, to be outward looking, not inward focused, but outward focused and engaging with people that we're not already talking to. I mentioned the membership side of things before. Here's a graph of membership since 2001. So Queensland's in the blue line there. And importantly, the orange line's New South Wales. Now why do we compare ourselves against New South Wales? not only from a state of origin perspective, but also because they are a, a bigger organisation than us. And if you look at, everything's declining, unfortunately, but in this red circle here, we've actually seen a little bit of growth in recent years. So that's a real positive. We need to get away from being negative and focusing on, oh, well, everything's sort of going downwards, downwards, downwards. How do we change that around? It's not, why can't we do something? It's how can we do something? So I see there's a lot of potential. Interestingly, we've also dropped by less than New South Wales. So we've only dropped by 22%. New South Wales has dropped by 24, 26%. So there's some real positives there if we take those out of them. Also note, in, uh, we recently received a Dog, Dog Victoria's annual reports, and they're, in, they're showing that their trials and, and shows are actually increasing. So it's possible. It's not, we're not grasping at impossible straws here or making up fabrications. We can do the same. There's no reason why we can't. We just need to get focused on it. And I said, it's about promoting the passion, enthusiasm and the excitement that we all have. Getting back to the opportunities at hand, some of the big opportunities that I see we can capitalise on is around about sponsorships and corporate involvement and funding. We're currently drafting a corporate sponsorship proposal at the present, and will be a number of events, shows, uh, expos, and other things that we do. We have the ability to put our, our company's logo in front of 262,000 people a year. That's a lot. And that's something that organisations will pay for, and we need to sort of capitalise on, onto that side of things. But we need the pitch and we need the proposal to go and do that. So we're working on that at the moment. The other avenue where, we, where, where we're not sort of, uh, well, I guess we haven't capitalised on ourselves is the area of grants and grant writing and tapping into government funding to, to helping to do things. Many of the clubs are already really effective at doing this and we see this through lots of the, the smaller grants uh, through the community funds and those sort of things. We need to be doing this as well. And I know from speaking with a number of people at the different shows, there's a lot of people out within the membership that have got some fantastic skills in submission writing, in lobbying, in grant writing. So we need to tap into that as well and get their help to, to, uh, to, to capitalise on those things. The other element is a supplier rebate. The group negotiating power of any organisation is, is really strong. And lots of, I've been in lots of different membership-based organisations. We've got a membership base of almost 7,000, which is big. There's a lot of power there. We were talking to a couple of the members about a fuel deal. Uh, an average fuel bill uh, uh, for some is about $200 a week. You multiply $200 a week by, let's say, 40 weeks a year, by even if we took half the membership, so 3,500 people throughout Queensland, that's about $28 million in terms of fuel that, that members are buying. We need to be working with organisations like Shell or BP or Puma or any of the fuel organisations to set up deals where there's a benefit to you as members but also a benefit back to the organisation. Whether that's a sponsorship or whether that's a rebate or, or however that works, the opportunities are there. And we can do that across 
lots of things. We all buy pet food, we all buy pet supplies, we all buy dog beds, we all buy leads, we all buy insurance, we all do with banking. Um, so the, the scope doesn't have to sit just with dog related products. We can do anything from house insurance, to car insurance, tyres, fuel, you name it, we're going to look at exploring it. And as we develop, you'll see that sort of information coming out on those things as well. The other opportunity I mentioned it just before was uh, the volunteers. As I said, from talking to lots of people as I go around the shows and at different meetings, everyone's got some fantastic skills. We've got people who are ex-government. We've got people who have done submission writing and tender writing. We've got legal people. We've got construction people, we've got truck drivers and bricklayers and concreters and all sorts of things. We just need to be tapping into those people and asking for their help uh, to get Jurac and everything that we do running a lot better and running more effectively. Many hands make light work and that's certainly what we're sort of focused on going through the year. So we'll be calling for those sort of volunteers and getting people more engaged and being, again, it's as much outward focused from the staff as well as everybody as well. So the staff will be out openly, outwardly focused, asking for, for help and assistance with, with different things as well. So we'll be working on that as well. Oops. So in summary, you might have guessed from my presentation, there's a lot of positivity. I think we need to engage the passion, the enthusiasm and the excitement from all of you as members into the organisation. I believe there's a really, really positive future for Dogs Queensland. Our budget target puts us back into surplus and for taking advantage of these opportunities at hand and these opportunities that come forward we can increase and diversify our income streams going forward as well. So we'll be working to market and promote ourselves better and thereby grow participation and engagement with what we're doing from members but also from new members as well. We'll be looking to engage with you as volunteers as, and get you involved with a lot of what we're doing as Dogs Queensland and importantly, Dogs Queensland is your organisation. It's not mine, it's not the board's, it's yours as the whole membership base. So we'll be moving forward with passion, excitement and enthusiasm because we're not looking to sell Jurac at the moment. So that's off the cards. We're stabilising what we're doing at the moment. So thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today and give you a bit of an insight into where we're trying to go with Dogs Queensland from the board's perspective and from my perspective and from the staff's perspective as well. If you've got any questions or want to contact me at any time, my details are up there um, and I'm happy to talk to anybody.